Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with LearnVisualStudio.net. In this lesson, we'll get started with jQuery. And jQuery is simply a library that's written in JavaScript, aimed at simplifying JavaScript, and making it easier to write JavaScript that works equally well across all popular web browsers. And as a result, it's become the most popular library, almost indispensable to JavaScript developers. It's often described as having four main concerns. DOM, AJAX, event, and effects. DOM, AJAX, event, and effects. Okay, and so uh, you can kind of repeat that as a mantra if you want to, but let's look at each one of those and get a little better understanding of what that means. First of all, as far as the DOM is concerned, jQuery provides a cross-browser way of working with the DOM. This is the biggest advantage for most developers. The creator of jQuery once gave a talk entitled the DOM is a mess, uh, and he said that due to all the many different implementations of the DOM by different vendors over the years. Compatibility issues between browsers have created a lot of headaches for developers. So in the past, developers might attempt to determine the capabilities of the browser and then write code based on what that browser will support. jQuery takes care of virtually all of these issues for you, so you can just focus on the functionality, not the underlying idiosyncrasies of individual browsers. And jQuery also provides a simplified technique for getting at DOM elements, as well as an easier way to traverse the DOM and modify the elements using a cascading style sheet syntax. So in the next video, we're gonna to start to look at jQuery selectors in more depth. As far as Ajax is concerned, uh, jQuery provides simple methods that you can use to exchange data with a web server using Ajax without requiring a full page refresh. Uh, it gives easy ways to work with the data that's returned from an Ajax call. So if you don't know what Ajax means, don't worry, I'm gonna be explaining everything that you need to know about it, I think in lesson 18 or 19. So for just now, know that jQuery makes working with Ajax almost trivial, so simple that anybody can use it. As far as events are concerned, uh, first of all, jQuery provides a bootstrap script, I guess you could say, to access DOM elements immediately after the DOM is constructed and ready for use, but potentially before the window.onload has fired, which indicates, as you'll recall from the previous video, that all the images, uh, any media files like Flash or movies, uh, any other large files are finished downloading on that page. So at the very end of the previous video, I liken that to our JavaScript potentially arriving late to the party. Uh, the page has partially rendered, the user starts clicking around, but our JavaScript hasn't been attached to the events of the elements on the page yet because we're waiting for uh, window.onload. All right, so jQuery solves this. Uh, moreover, jQuery supports a simplified event handling model so for example, you can add multiple events to a single event. You can easily remove events when you, events when you no longer need them. And so we're gonna look at jQuery's event handling in lesson number 15 or 16. As far as effects are concerned, jQuery has built-in effects and animations. So things like fading in and fading out and hiding and showing, uh, changing the CSS classes for a given element on the fly, uh, moving uh, elements around on the screen and so on. And then finally, jQuery provides a rich extensibility model through plugins. And there are thousands of plugins for all sorts of purposes. There are light boxes and carousels and drag and drop and tabs and video players and a lot more. In fact, you can create your own and we're gonna look at how to include existing jQuery plugins in like lesson 16 or 17, uh, learning how to create them on your own. Not covered in this series, but it's pretty simple to do if you have some functionality that you wanna reuse on uh, other projects or share with the entire world. So jQuery is an open source, open source library that was developed over many years by volunteers. It's grown into a major concern and as a result of its stability and its popularity and how vital it's become to web developers, Microsoft has now included jQuery in many of their templates for ASP.NET applications and they regularly contribute to the project. They've expressed that they're putting their full support behind jQuery instead of developing their own JavaScript library and I think that's a splendid idea, honestly. Okay, so hopefully I convinced you that jQuery is the direction that you should be headed as a JavaScript developer. Uh, there are many organizations, not just Microsoft, that are supporting jQuery to host the jQuery files, both the original or the um, uh, 
development version and then also the production version. Uh, and they do this by distributing them on their content delivery network or CDN. So a CDN, if you ever hear that term, is simply a collection of computers that are redundant around the world. So when a request comes into a web server for a given uh, file, say for example, the jQuery library file, like we'll see here in a moment, uh, the uh, it'll serve back to the user's browser the uh, file from the server that's closest geographically to that user. All right, so that's the value of a CDN, redundancy and then serving it up from a server that's geographically close to the end user. Uh, so let's do this at this point. Let's take a look at jQuery's website. Just go to jQuery.com and let's take a look at the downloads. And you can see in the downloading jQuery there's some uh, deep links into this page. If we take a look at the CDN hosted jQuery, you can see that Microsoft has a CDN and they have um, uh, the minified version that you can use in your own web pages. They also have uh, a non-minified version. We'll talk about what that is in just a moment. Um, so you can also download jQuery and put it on your own servers if you want to as well. And you can see the download links right here. Um, and note that, uh, as I mentioned a moment ago, that there are two versions of jQuery. There's the development version, which is uncompressed, and then there is a production version, which is minified. You can see the minified version just has the .min.js. And so uh, the difference is basically that the development or the uncompressed version is the human readable version. And it's great if you plan on looking at the code yourself in an attempt to understand how it works. Uh, otherwise, the minified version, it removes all extraneous characters like blank spaces. It, so it basically is reducing the file size, shortening the names, uh, for the given variables and so on. And this is the version that you should be using when you're distributing your application for public use. Uh, so if you're, one other little note here, uh, if you're watching this series so that ultimately you can build Windows 8 applications using WinRT, uh, then you must download the jQuery file and include it with your project since you can't utilize resources over the internet without paying the penalty of reduced trust on the end user's computer. Uh, and I have a, a little uh, uh, reference here to a video that you can watch on Channel 9 that talks about this at length, okay? But regardless of how you intend to reference it from your HTML file, you can write uh, some code to test up if you wired it properly. And so at this point, you wanna make sure that you grab the code from uh, this lesson. It's probably all bundled up together. Uh, but what we wanna do is take a look at the c9js underscore 14.html page. So you can see I have a script tag that references the minified version of the jQuery library. It's identical to the script tag below it. The only difference is that in the tag below, I'm referencing the script14.js file where we'll write our JavaScript code that references the jQuery library. In the jQuery reference, you can see that I'm referencing Microsoft's CDN that hosts the file that I need. So take a moment and make sure that you've caught up to me and you have at least this much. Now we want to open up a script page in Notepad and we just want to wire it up to make sure that jQuery is indeed running. So here's where how we're going to get started. We're going to just type this in and we'll talk about what it does in just a moment. So jQuery passing in a document, ready, and then we'll create an anonymous function inside of that uh, I'm just going to type here startup code goes here and we'll just do alert this works okay so let's save that and let's uh, save the other one as well and so now let's just open it up in a web browser and we see right away that we get the uh, alert box pop open. So let's take a moment and look at exactly what it is that we did here uh, because I'm sure this syntax looks foreign to you at this point. But it's just based on everything that we've learned up to this point. Uh, and so there's nothing really here that uh, should blow us away as long as we understand some of these keywords. All right, so first of all, uh, you can see there's this jQuery and it has a pair of parentheses and the word document inside of it. So the, this is called the jQuery function. 
uh, it accepts a parameter that's called a selector expression. In this case, I'm sending in as the selector expression the entire document, or rather the entire DOM. All right. If you remember from the previous lesson how we had the hierarchy of objects in the DOM, window owns document, which owns all of the individual DOM elements in our web page. So we're passing in the document and saying, uh, this is the context. This is what we're going to be working with. Uh, and this will return a jQuery object. And so once we have a new jQuery object with its context set to document, uh, then all the methods and properties uh, that we call will be in relation to that context. In other words, we're going to call the ready method next. When we call the ready method, we're asking jQuery to evaluate when the entire document, the entire DOM, is ready. And so when jQuery determines that the context this whole thing is ready, uh, then uh, we are going to execute this handler code that we've written inside. In other words, this anonymous function that we created. In this case, the anonymous function simply is popping up an alert box to screen. Okay. So what we can do also, because you don't want to keep typing the full word jQuery every time there's a shortcut, an alias, you can just use the dollar sign. So let's save that and then refresh our web page and make sure this still works. All right, and so this is a handy way of getting to the jQuery function as well as the jQuery object itself that's returned from the function whenever we need to work with it. And you'll see that used often in jQuery code. All right, so you might be wondering, well, why are we passing in an anonymous function here? instead of a named function, we certainly could reference a, uh, a, a uh, function like we did in the previous example in the last lesson where we had a run the example function. Uh, however, usually this code is only run at one time during sort of the initialization step of the web page. And so you don't need to give it a name because you only expect it to be called one time. All right. So you might wonder why do we need the ready method at all in this line of code. All right, so hopefully you're paying attention to the previous lesson. That's exactly why we need the ready method. Uh, if you recall, I pointed out that there was a potential gap in time between the moment when the DOM is fully created and ready for use and the moment when your web page has completely uh, finished downloading all of the images and other external resources, at which point the window.onload event fires, but and, and was really the first opportunity for us to write uh, code to work with the DOM. But that gap is dangerous because users can potentially be working with the page as it's rendering, but before we're able to add or attach our JavaScript code. So jQuery solves this dilemma by testing the DOM to see if it's ready and uses several different techniques to determine if the DOM is ready. In some cases, in the newer browsers, uh, they'll raise an event to distinguish between the DOM ready and the window.onload. So jQuery will use that. In older browsers, there are some well-established tricks and hacks that have been uncovered to, to accomplish this. Uh, and so it'll use those. It'll degrade to those if um, the newer methods are not available. And then finally, as a last resort, jQuery will degrade gracefully and fall back to window.onload if all else fails. Okay, so this is what the ready method does. It allows you to define an anonymous function or name function uh, where you can write code that accesses the DOM safely. So most developers use this as the place where they define their event handlers, uh, wiring them up like we did in the previous lesson, and perform other initialization tasks for the web page. So again, we'll talk about event handlers and wiring those up soon. Um, now, here's another little shortcut. Instead of this full syntax of dollar sign, passing in the document, calling the ready method, we can simply use this shortcut and just delete all of this stuff right there. And so you can see jQuery already has a bunch of shortcuts for us, so we don't have to type unnecessarily. I'm just going to refresh the web page and it still works. All right. And for more information about all these sorts of things, you really need to spend some time in the API reference. Um, so I usually start with the jQuery core and start working my way from there down. Um, or I can do a quick search for like, for example, a ready. And I search for that and I can find the ready method.
all right? And I can read about it and how it works and so on, all right? Now, one other curious thing about jQuery is that we've already talked about it. Here, let's go to the core section. So just click core in the browse the jQuery API and then click on jQuery. And you'll note here, you'll note that there are several different ways to call jQuery. Um, I want to talk about the syntax used to invoke jQuery because this often trips up developers who are new to jQuery, just like it would be not so obvious to go from um, jQuery dot or jQuery passing in a document dot ready all the way down to just this single um, uh, dollar sign, then an opening and closing parenthesis, right? So uh, this often trips people up, and I just want to talk about the different ways in which the jQuery function can be invoked and what that means. Whenever we pass in, like for example, a CSS selector expression like this, so you might see this. All right, or something like this. or something like this okay so these are different ways different css selectors that we're passing in and whenever we do that what's returned is an object of type jquery uh, or what most people refer to as a jquery object uh, and if you take a look at the documentation here you can see that uh, in this case whenever we pass in a selector to jQuery, it'll return an object of type jQuery. And so you can see that this refers us to the t slash types slash uh, pound jQuery to push us down on this, the different types that are available inside of jQuery, right? And so what exactly is a jQuery object and how does it differ from the jQuery function? Well, the jQuery object is an array-like structure or rather it's a collection of document object model elements comprised of elements from the document that match the selector as defined in the input parameter to the jQuery function. So in this case, we're saying find all paragraph tags. In this case, we're saying use the CSS selector to find all, so a collection of DOM elements that have an ID of my first paragraph. There should only be one, right? Uh, or find all elements in the document and return them as a collection where their class is important text. All right, so what this returns is a collection of objects represented in the document object model. This jQuery object that's returned also provides full access to the breadth of jQuery attributes and methods that you can perform on that collection of DOM elements. So in the case that we had before, where we were working with a document. At this point, we're working with the entire DOM element, and that's why we call the dot ready. We're working with the full collection of the document object model, all right? And then calling the ready method, saying, tell me when the entire, when all the elements inside of the document are ready and have been instantiated, all right? And so if we were to call another example, like for example, fade out. So now we're saying, whenever you encounter this line of code, bring me back a collection of paragraph uh, objects from the document object model. And now on all of those, that entire collection, uh, call the fade out property, which will, or method rather, which will uh, make all of the uh, paragraphs slowly fade out and no longer visible on the web page. Okay. So some people talk about the jQuery object. Uh, you'll have to determine by context whether they're talking about this or the entire thing. Are they talking about the function that you normally would call uh, using the word jQuery? Or are they talking about everything that jQuery returns, the entire collection that's returned, okay? Uh, and sometimes you're just going to have to figure that out by the context of whatever they're, they're discussing at that given point in time. At least that's what I found. Uh, but, you know, we've looked at one use of the jQuery function by passing in uh, selectors, uh, but there's other things that we can do with the jQuery function. For example, you can create HTML on the fly and then attach the uh, 
the HTML to the document object model uh, kind of dynamically. So let's take a look at an example of that. I'll go ahead and use the full jQuery word knowing that I could just use the alias instead. But let's just do this to make it obvious. And if I pass in a bunch of HTML, so for example, here we'll go uh, div ID equals badge. And then we'll close the div out. And notice I'm doing this inside of a single set of, of uh, quotation marks. Uh, so we'll put in an image with a source equals uh, badge.gif and then alt equals uh, badge earned for achievement, all right, or something along those lines. All right, so it's a pretty long line of code, but ultimately we're just passing in a string that we hope to be created into a series of DOM elements that we can then attach to our existing DOM in our web page. So we can dynamically add new HTML to our web page using this syntax. All right, so then another way that you can see jQuery used is to attach new functions or objects to the jQuery object. So in this case, uh, we can do jQuery dot or, you know, hey, let's just have fun here and use the alias this time. We want to create with uh, my custom method. Uh, equals function uh, alert high and then we can also create other objects inside of the namespace like for example if I wanted to create a list box I can do something like this and do a show so I would create a function here that would you know include the code to show my light box and then um, hide my light box and I'd write some code in there to hide it and then I would do a position so function and then initiate And just to be clear, the benefit of this approach is that we've removed both our function declaration and our object declaration from the global namespace and nestled it safely inside of the jQuery namespace. This isn't necessary. You could simply create your own namespace for these sorts of things like we've seen in a previous lesson. However, you will see people writing code like this out there and they're probably using jQuery's namespace so that they don't pollute the global namespace. So the moral of the story is twofold. Uh, first of all, the jQuery function is very powerful. Uh, if there's a set of parentheses after the word jQuery or its alias, the dollar sign, then you probably are looking at one of the overloaded versions of the jQuery function uh, as we looked at on uh, this page right here. And so I would just encourage you to review and see, does, is it a selector that's being passed in? Is it just literal HTML being passed in? Is it a function being passed in? And then based on that, jump down and learn more about its usage uh, from, uh, from jQuery support files, right? Um, and so remember that in most cases, the jQuery function returns a jQuery object, which is usually a collection of DOM elements that match the selector that you pass in in the input parameter of the jQuery function. In some cases, it can represent a brand new set of DOM elements that are being inserted into the DOM, as is the case uh, here, all right? Uh, the other moral to the story is that you're dealing with the jQuery object directly. If you see a period after the word jQuery, like we do here, or a period after its alias, uh, then the code is attempting to attach itself to jQuery's namespace to avoid being part of the global namespace, which we said was a bad thing. Uh, and then there's one more thing that you'll see a jQuery function do. Uh, you might see an anonymous uh, function that's passed in like so, um, like right here, how we used it in this particular case. And jQuery is smart enough to know the type of argument uh, that you passed it. And since you passed it a function in this case, you therefore intend it to be used as a shortcut to the ready method. Otherwise, it would default to its normal usage like we've seen uh, already. So also, I think that it's important for you to realize that the call to ready uh, to the ready method can be used as many times as you need for it to be used. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and delete all of this code right here. And I can even put these in separate files, but I'm just going to do this really quick. 
and uh, I'm just gonna add this works one, this works two, this works three, all right? So now I have four versions of our uh, ready method here, all defined in kind of their own chunk of code. So now let's see what happens whenever we reload our web page. We got four alert boxes to pop up, all right? So just keep that in mind that uh, you can, in several different code files, if you need to attach new event handlers or whatever the case might be, uh, you can continue using the ready method and it'll just keep attaching things uh, to um, kind of a queuing process. And then once the ready method is ready to fire off, it'll start executing all those things that we've been attaching to it over time. Pretty cool, right? Now, a lot of these are just kind of exceptions to, to the rule. I'm going to delete all that. Um, uh, in most cases, whenever you pass a, an argument into the jQuery function, you're passing in a, uh, a selector that represents the elements of the DOM that you want to work with. Again, let me just give you an example of this. In this case, we want to work with all the paragraph elements in the DOM. Uh, so to choose those elements in the DOM, you use a CSS syntax. So any elements like we have here, any classes like I uh, used before, important text, or any specific IDs like uh, my first paragraph. These are all in play, and this is the normal usage or the usage you see most often within uh, jQuery code. Um, and you can also use CSS3 specific selectors. The newest version of CSS3 has some really wild selectors that are available. And so you can get very creative and very specific and target those elements in the DOM that you want to work with. But once you have uh, defined this, you're working now with what? The jQuery object, right. And you can call any of jQuery's uh, methods at that point. And the methods themselves will all return a jQuery object as well. So uh, fade out for example, and we can also, uh, like say, give it uh, how many milliseconds we want it to fade out and then call it one more time, fade in, and say fade back in, so we can make it kind of glow for, or just blink briefly, right? So this, this returns a jQuery object on which we call the fade out method, which calls a jQuery object, which then calls the fade in, which returns a jQuery object, and we can keep chaining these together, all right? Okay, so we've had a lot of fun here. Let's go ahead and start really looking at um, how this is used in other simple scenarios. So I'm just gonna go ahead and comment this out. this page, you can see that we have a paragraph with an ID of first, a paragraph with an ID of second, and a paragraph with an ID of third. We have a header with an ID of title. We have an anchor with an ID of my anchor. All right, so this should be enough to, to have some fun with, right? Uh, so let's work with the title, the H1 with an ID of title. So to get to it, what are we gonna do? Can you think about what this will look like? All right, I'm gonna use the pound symbol which says we're talking about an ID for a given element, in the pound symbol representing the ID, dot text. And I'm gonna just say, uh, yay. I can now get at the H1 immediately. All right, so let's go ahead and save this. And then let's, uh, Fresh our page here. You can see that at the very outset, I can modify the H1 text without using inner HTML, which we talked about was a bad idea in the previous lesson. Very easy to do. So that's working with the text inside of it. Now let's look work with. Um, let's go with the ID first, which will return the single paragraph with an ID of first. And then we're going to change the HTML and say, just add an H2 there. And I'm going to say, great quotes. Go ahead and save this. And then let's look at the after. 
There we go. So it changed the text uh, to the words great quote and it wrapped an H2 around it. So here we're modifying just the text. Here we're adding HTML as well. Cool. All right, so let's go work with the first element again. And now we're going to use prepend. Uh, and so we'll just, we don't want to blow away that that line in HTML uh, in the previous, in this uh, one here. This is where we're replacing it. Here we just want to add something right before, uh, right before our first paragraph. So here we're going to type in great quotes. Prepend. Spell it correctly here, and now let's go and refresh it. Ah, okay. So now we were able to prepend our H2 great quotes above the paragraph itself. Awesome. Let's keep working with this. In fact, I'm just going to go ahead and leave that there, and I'm going to show how to add stuff after. So here again, we're going to work with first, and then we're going to append. Uh, an H3 for you to ponder. Let's save that. And so you can see now here is our first paragraph. We were appending and now we are, or prepending, and now we are appending, which puts it after uh, our selector. Great. And so I think it's important to note here that, um, and I'll just type this out, uh, append and prepend work inside the given selection. There are some others that we can look at, like before, after, insert, before, insert, after, that work outside the given selection, all right? All right, so I would just encourage you to take some time and to learn about all the different ways to manipulate uh, a given selection by looking at the manipulation. And you can see that we can add classes to selections. Here we've already looked at or talked about the after. Here's the append, um, changing attributes, the before. We can change the CSS uh, of a given selection and just literally dozens of these and we can't go through them all in a video but they work exactly the same way as what we've demonstrated up to this point all right uh, let's look at just a couple more and then we're going to wrap this up uh, so we had if you recall an anchor called my anchor and i'm going to change the attribute which attribute the href and i'm going to change it from, uh, let's see, from learnvisualstudio.net, my website. So let's take a look at this. So currently the href attribute is pointing to learnvisualstudio.net. However, I can change the attribute, the href attribute to um, channel9.msdn.com. So let's go ahead and save that. And let's refresh, whoops. All right, and now you can see programmatically, I'm able to change it on the fly to go to channel nine. Awesome. And then finally, uh, you'll notice that in our HTML here, I reference a style sheet called style14.css. If we take a look at that file, it merely uh, creates a large red font. All right, and what I wanna do is apply that dynamically to the title. So here we go. Uh, we're going to reference the title. And then we're going to call add class. So we're going to add a CSS class called stand out. And if this is all wired up correctly, the next time we look at our web page, uh, we get not only it uh, have created a large font, but I think we also, I skipped over it, but we 
aligned it to the right hand side as well. Whoops. There we go. Yeah, text align right, which I forgot to point out. And so it has uh, these results just to make sure that it uh, draws our attention. Okay, so uh, this was a very high level, very quick overview of making selections and then calling attributes and methods on the return jQuery object. Um, and up to this point, for the most part, we've been working with just IDs for individual items. But what I want to do in the next video is talk more about CSS selectors and show the other things that you can do uh, to get at individual elements within the DOM. So I'll see you in the next lesson. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.